85. Channel 85. Channel 85. The periodic table of the elements contained 118 or up to 118 elements, but uh, was actually missing uh, element 117. Welcome to Scientific Station. I'm Brendan Crawwell. The periodic table of the elements is a chart that many people are familiar with from high school chemistry that lists a letter that designates the atom that it describes, as well as some numbers that describe the makeup and the mass of that element. The, uh, the periodic table is arranged in columns that uh, uh, describe uh, characteristics of the classes of elements. The uh, elements that were originally discovered uh, occur naturally and were able to be found uh, using chemical reactions and their descriptive properties um, could be measured. As, as the periodic table was filled out though, it became harder and harder to find these elements and uh, uh, into the 20th century, uh, it, scientists had to start making elements using nuclear uh, fusion uh, to see what the, the newest elements would be. The first one of these was uh, berkelium, which was created at the University of California, Berkeley. And it's a large atom uh, with a giant mass and is radioactive and produces a lot of radioactivity. Uh, in doing this, they, the elements, berkelium and the elements that came after that tend to be highly unstable um, and need to be measured and determined mostly by looking at what happens once they break down. Some of these elements only exist for a few seconds or even nanoseconds, but in the breakdown where they no longer exist, they leave a, a map or, that describes that they had existed. So every few years, there would be a lab that would have done the work to make one of these new elements and it would be filled in a, a little square on the periodic table that would have a number. And once another lab would confirm its existence and that the discovery actually happened, and to do this, they would have to repeat the experiment, then a name would be assigned to the element. Uh, the earlier elements, hydrogen, carbon, gold, uh, had, the names were taken from with gold and, and with these other elements. They already had names described to them um, because they're so common in nature and people had already encountered them. The newer elements, though, tend to be named either, as with berkelium, uh, to honor the lab that did the discovery or in the case of Einsteinium or Copernicum, uh, they are honoring scientists who lived and contributed a lot to, to their fields. Uh, they don't, the naming of the element doesn't always uh, describe who named it though, and actually that, that's not very common. So uh, all of the elements up to 116 had been described and discovered and in the attempts to find seven, 117, they just couldn't do it. Uh, and actually, 118 was discovered before 117. Just recently, element 117 was discovered. Uh, to do this, uh, the physicists who were doing this work uh, were trying to see, is there any way to get these elements to exist longer than the amount of time that they had, the few seconds or longer that some of these elements existed, but still just short periods of time. And a theory was proposed that there would be islands of stability where the elements could be made heavier enough given something called an isotope uh, number. And to create 117, uh, this idea of the islands of stability had to be exploited. Uh, the discovery of 117 showed that the, these islands, these islands of stability, seem to exist, although they take lots of energy uh, to cause the fusion to make them happen. So it takes a lot of energy and probably equipment that 
won't exist for a few more decades now that the technology is, is still being developed. Knowing that we have the potential of these islands of stability, though, uh, these heavier elements will be able to be studied in greater detail and will probably provide insight into uh, better production of energy for humans. Well, to get back to element 117, the first lab in Russia has claimed its discovery, and now another lab is going to need to confirm that by repeating all of the steps uh, in the experiment that the Russians used to create this element. Given that the Russians spent months bombarding particles in their accelerators, it's unlikely that this is going to happen any time in the future. But once it is done, then scientists will be able to name this element that right now just has to be called element 117. Now, uh, many people can have input into what this uh, element should be called. And in one poll that was taken online, uh, some people have suggested that it be named after Stephen Colbert. Uh, lots of people want to name things after Stephen Colbert right now. Well, for more information, visit scientificstation.com.